Well, greetings. This is the Sacred Wellspring of Sacred Sister Soul Talks TV. Ah, oh, what a beautiful night. The moon is shining and there's a halo around, around the moon. It's a beautiful night here in Barbados. I came outside because the internet connection is really, really sketchy here. So I am hoping that this connection can prove the test of time and we can have a conversation. Hopefully Cindy Rosita will join us and um, so we can continue our discussion from last week where we talked about getting your mind right. Please forgive the noise in the background, I'm outside on the patio. So Cindy Rosita is a mindset coach and last week we looked at several areas that um, as we grow into this new dimension and new energy, we're having to face um, doing our work. We call it doing our shadow work, where we take a look at ourselves um, from a personal, professional. Hi, come on in. Let me add you. Let's see what can happen. All right. All right. Hello, hello. <laughs> Who are you? This is crazy. Hello. I have I'm to come good. outside because I, I can't get a good connection inside. So I guess I this is where it's all to be. Hoping we get a Wi-Fi. <laughs> Sorry, queens. We we're sorry we were late. We could not get a connection. That is okay. Yeah, please forgive us. That is okay. I'm yes, in a new location. I, was... I wanted to get out, but it's about 42 <laughs> degrees. So... <laughs> <laughs> I guess the divine wanted us outside because I had to come outside just to get this connection. That's what it sounds <laughs> like. That is exactly what it sounds like. Check this out. We are we are outside <laughs> we on are such outside. a beautiful day. <laughs> I so love it. Are. I love it. <laughs> Please forgive the noise in the background, y'all. Um this is the best I can do uh, for right now. I was just recapping with everyone that what we talked about last week in Get Your Mind Right. And since we're all doing our shadow work as we move forward into the fifth dimension, for some yeah. people, it it really works. They last nerve and they struggle because not everybody has someone they can talk to or share information with and really know that they're on the right path. Those who have that, great. Um, so as I was saying to you earlier, I am not a big social media person, but this is necessary at this stage so that we can now connect and know that those who are alone or feel alone and can't understand the symptoms that's been happening, happening with their bodies or uh, what's been happening with them mentally, that they're not alone. So mm -hmm. I thought this was really cool um, and timely for us to connect. So last week we talked about the placebo effect. We talked about ego right. versus confidence. Um, we talked about not compromising, goal setting. This is all personal, y'all. This is not goal setting for your business or mm -hmm. um, for your job. This is about you at this stage. And we also talked about having affirmations. So this week, we wanted to look at self-improvement, um, techniques for coping with the stress in our ever-changing world. But because as we know with COVID, a lot of people have uh, committed suicide. A lot of people are so stressed out from hearing the name alone. So I give you the floor, Cindy. I have some questions. And if you may, enlighten our people. Tell us about a time you push someone. I, I, I'm going to start hot. Why not? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. that's, how, that's how the energy is going. Um, yeah. Let's talk about the time you push someone out of their comfort zone. 
how did that make you feel and what did it accomplish a time that i put side their comfort zone Ooh. i feel like i've done that a number of times to a few people <laughs> but i will say my fiance is one person that i have pushed i have pushed and i have pushed and i believe that's why we are together growth um now my fiance is a type of individual he's very outdoorsy he loves to be outside he loves the mountains he loves to climb he needs to be active i am from florida i'm an island girl <laughs> i love to sit by the beach i love the water that is my go to now the time that i pushed him out of his comfort zone was when i asked him if he would stay with my family for a month now i you know i thought this would be a very simple task in my head i thought it couldn't be that bad how much could it possibly push this individual well it pushed him it pushed him it pushed him it pushed us now when he came to florida there were so many things that were just so outside of his there were no mountains to climb <laughs> There was a beach and there was a pier. I said you could sit by this water if you want to. But of course he he didn't. He was very aggravated on this trip. He wasn't in his happy place. He didn't find that cool air, the mountain air, the animals. What he found was traffic. We lived in the city. So there were all sorts of distractions that I did understand to a certain extent was playing uh an effect on him and influencing his anxiety and his depression and his sadness on this trip which I did understand but at the same time one thing I did reiterate to him on this trip I said it doesn't matter where you go it depends on how you feel and what you think in here and I said if you're not okay up here you won't be okay anywhere and that's one thing we've reiterated in our relationship just going forward. And I do understand there are certain pleasures in being around a circumstance that or an environment that you gravitate towards, a place that you enjoy being around. Things that have become so comfortable to you simply because it's routine to you. But sometimes we got to get up and we got to go. We have to explore the world around us. We have to explore individuals that are different from us. We have to explore you may not enjoy it but there's always something to be learned in every experience so i will say that's one of the times i did push him it wasn't a week it wasn't a few days it was a full month outside of his comfort zone <laughs> and um needless to say i feel like it was a good learning experience because when we went back he had a very different attitude so i will say that's one yeah. one of many examples yeah, my my getting uncomfortable. I call it getting uncomfortable, even in your comfortableness. Um, making that move back to Barbados for me was uncomfortable because I was I was comfortable where I was. I had a very nice apartment. Um, I I had a job where I loved the children, working with the children. So yeah. that's a sort of a comfort. Um, I had a car. I would go down to the lake in the evenings and read my book, uh, watch the fish, make plans to jump in the, the, the kayak when it got cooler. I had yeah. a, so I was comfortable. Um, I listened to the divine where you have to move. You have to make that move. And it took me a better part of a year to come to that conclusion. I was hesitant, but I made the move. And coming back to the island was not difficult, but it was different. It was different than yeah. when I left it as a young girl and moving to America. It was different. And coming back, it was almost like shell shock. So I was getting, did I make the right choice? I was beginning to get uncomfortable. But that's when the breakthrough happened for me. Um, when a little guy said to me, you can't leave. And to make a long story short, I stayed 
and now I see why I had to stay. Um, because people are coming and they're opening up about their gifts. Um, they're very comfortable when they come into my space. So they share their story. Please forgive that noise. They share their story. So then now I'm beginning to just settle myself and um, accept what's been given to me. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a learning curve. I don't know if I'm fully comfortable yet, but I'm getting there. And I'm learning to go within and work through me before I put it out there to the world. Yeah. You know, That's so cool. I'm, I'm, I'm in mm -hmm. my learning curve. I'm in my learning curve. Let me ask you a question. How did coaching sure. change your life? How Ooh. did that change for you? Um, I will say it's, I feel I've gained more perspective simply because I feel the reason why I got into coaching in the first place is because I wish I had that mentor. I wish I had the direction. Mm. I wish I had someone to show me the ways, which I feel I didn't really have. Now we have family, we have friends, but they're not always mm -hmm. right. They are not always right. Um, mm. So I got into coaching simply because of my own traumas. Uh, just growing up, we all have generational curses that need to be broken. We all have oh, bad yes. habits. <laughs> we have toxicity. Yeah. We have habits that we've learned to start implementing in our everyday life that we probably shouldn't have. And so for me, I got into coaching simply for that reason. I said, if I could have prevented a lot of the mistakes I've made in my life, I really wish somebody could have held my hand, talked to me, get my mind right, help me learn about me. Because a lot of what I grew up with was a perspective of how to work for somebody else. Also, how to please somebody else. Never how to please myself. Never how to look inward. You have to show up for yourself first. And um, ultimately, I feel like that's what we all need. Oh, I can't hear you. Let me see. Are you able to hear me? Uh-oh. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Oh. You just go. said to show up for the world. You have to show up for yourself. Expand upon that so that people are very clear. I, that is too key to just gloss over. I, as you know, we know the world is ever changing. The world is constantly shifting. We're dealing with a pandemic at hand. Now we're isolated. Mm. We're dealing with ourselves in a deeper fashion, which I feel like this is why a lot of people are having a hard time simply being alone. How often do you have conversations with yourself? How well do you mm. know yourself anymore? Do you still do the things you like to do? What are the dreams mm. you had as a kid? Did somebody break them? Did somebody shatter your dream? Do you still think about those things? What do you want to do? What have you not made the time to do for yourself? So a lot of mm. self-reflection. This is a time for deeper digging. This is a time to reflect and heal yourself in order to show up for this very, very heavy world that we live a part of that needs healing mm. internationally. We're all feeling the effects of it. So mm. I mean, today we're talking about developmental wellness, self-improvement. And um, there are a few things that we, I know we discussed before this call um, that we'll get to today. I know you wanted to know, aside from affirmations, what other techniques uh -huh. or what other things can we think about to apply in our own everyday self-development? One thing yeah. um, I thought was really interesting that I heard recently, make an appointment with joy. Make an appointment Ooh. with joy. So that means the way you put on your calendar, the way you put on your alarm, that you have an interview, 
that you have a meeting, that you have an appointment to go to, you dress up really well, you get your state of mind right to meet up, you need to show up for your yourself. So you take out any day, any time of day, say three o'clock, I'm going to show up and make an appointment with Joy. So you show up, you show yourself that best version of yourself that you've shown everybody else. Dress up well, look nice, Ooh. and show up for yourself. I love that. Do an activity that you haven't done in a while. Take that time for yourself. You want to draw a picture. You want to paint. You want to sit down and read a nice book. You want to watch a program. You want to do something that you haven't done in a while. Do it. Take that time. Take that time for you. Make an appointment with joy. Because nobody else is going to be able to do that for you. Wow. So we start there. Yes. Start there. That Make an appointment with joy. Listen, that, that is my ding, ding, ding moment right there. <laughs> Get dressed up and make an appointment with joy. It's a beautiful. Oh concept. my goodness! One person said their daughter just said that. Love it. I love that. Oh wow, I man! Love that. You got me here, just ready to jump <laughs> through there and just hug you <laughs> because I have been doing that since the first, since the first of them. I did that before, but since the first of February. I wake up every morning joyous. And this is wow. what I cascade throughout the day. Even when something falls that would normally annoy me, I'm like, oh, come on now. You can, it's all right. We got this. Right. And I talk to myself constantly, you know, because I'm here, I'm here basically, I have brothers and sisters, but in my world, it is just me. Mm -hmm. So I make a conscious effort to be joyous it's a conscious effort every day to be joyous um someone says okay i'll stop being cheap and take myself on a date i love it <laughs> i love that please do please do <laughs> listen before i came over here i had me a glass of sorrow wine that's my yes. Saturday night date with me. I me had too, girl. wine mm -hmm. and cheese. So that's yeah. my joyous moment. I do it with me. You know? Um, mm -hmm. That's brilliant. We also, we also want to talk about letting go of all hurts. Because I know this, this is for me as well as for everybody else who is dealing with um, um, letting go. Letting go of the pain that we inflict because excuse me, nobody hurts us but us. Right. Nobody to me, right. correct me if I'm wrong, nobody hurts us. And we like it's easy and I and I'm I'm guilty. It's easy to blame somebody for when we are in pain or when we hurt. We'd like to have that one person that we can point to. But for me, I'm learning to let go of all those things that don't serve me. Right. What are some of the techniques you can give to us to help us? Because I'm sure there's some of us out there who are still holding on to these whole hurts and want to blame it instead of looking at ourselves in the mirror and right. saying, you know what, I had a 50-50 chance. Um, um, I, I, I was a part of this hurt. So it's, it's on me. It's on me to be willing to do the work to let go. How do we begin to let go of those old hurts? Give us some Your technique. transition. Your mm -hmm. transition into this is so beautiful because I did write this down. Ooh. So, <laughs> one thing I did say is to stop your inner child. Stop your inner child from dominating mm. your behavior. So, what I say is... Wow. The reactive behaviors of fear, of anger, of avoidance, these are things mm. that they use to protect you, right? But then we mm. end up self-indulging in bad decisions. The way we react, it's all, it's all us. As you said, nobody's hurting us. 
But we have mm-hmm. the power to control a situation. So my technique mm. for that is to modify your behaviors. Take that accountability. Replace, okay. replace your behavior with healthier mm. perspectives. Okay, so as you said, we get upset about all sorts of things, right? Mm -hmm. But you have to change your way of thinking to others. Unfortunately, I, I have a hard time when other people get flustered and angry. We've been there when we've been somewhere, Mm -hmm. um, fast food restaurants, you get the cashier getting yelled at somebody's, you know, there's that hostility. I cannot tell you how much it amuses me that you get that fed up and that angry and that flustered that you're taking it Mm -hmm. out on this poor cashier. It's misdirected anger. You're not upset with that cashier. You are not upset. That's right. What you're upset about is everything that happened prior to you getting to the cashier because you didn't get Mm -hmm. there soon enough. Now it's busy. You decided to come during peak hour. It's your fault. Mm-hmm. You could have came an hour early. You could have beat the crowd. You didn't have to wait for your food that long. Mm. There's so many other things that I feel like we won't take the accountability for. We won't make the effort. Accountability. Accountability is key in modifying these mm. behaviors and how we choose to react. And I feel like there are so many things that as individuals, we decide we decide to do things that I feel like, again, our inner child would have done. Now we fear, we get upset, we get angry, we get sad. When really we do all these things to avoid taking on the situation for what it is itself. We don't want to take the blame. Mm. We'd like to blame others. But there is a way around that. And... Um, mm. Please, 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 please prioritize your personal development. Prioritize your personal development. Now, one thing I wanted to mention was uh, regulating your nervous system. Because we talked about the body. And Mm -hmm. as we know, our nervous system, it affects the way we breathe, the way we see, the way we think, so many things. Because when things get tough, how do we like to medicate? Uh-huh. Alcohol. Mm. The wrong people making the wrong decisions. When all in all, mm-hmm. just to regulate yourself, all you gotta do is breathe. Breathe. Now, the concept of breathing, to be honest, I remember taking the courses, I remember being talked to about breathing exercises breathing what does breathing do what does breathing do mm-hmm. breathing actually what's funny is breathing reduces your tension and it increases your relaxation immediately deep breaths from the true. diaphragm Very true. and that is something you mm-hmm. can do whether you're with the kids whether you're by yourself whether you're at work that is a technique you should always practice now, I found in times mm. where it's been very turbulent environments, that's one thing I have relied on is my breathing. Deep breath. Keep it going. You have to remember that. Now, I know we talked about affirmations last week. Now, if you combine your affirmations with some breathing, you're on fire. You are on fire. That is a deadly combination. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I set these intentions for the day every day. So every day I have an intention for the day, whether that's the, if I notice that I've been so, so busy for the whole week that, you know, it's starting to stress me out. My intention for the day becomes taking the day at my own pace. So slowing down. So that would be my intention for the day. So even when I'm in a hectic work environment, I go, what was my intention? I'll snap out of it. It's so funny. It's almost like a trance because I'll get so worked up and then I go, wait, my intention for the day was to be at my own pace. So then I immediately slow down. I go, oh, I'm disappointing myself. I'm disappointing my intentions. 
for my day because I have the ability to correct my day. That I have that power. Nobody else does. So it is up to me wow. to change my perspective, to change how I choose to react. So simply doing that, taking a deep breath, remember your affirmation, say your affirmation if you have to, whether you say it aloud or not, within. Apply it. And I will not tell you how to set your affirmations. I think it just comes from a very strong place when you're able to write it yourself, when you're able to, to know where it is you are and where it is you need to be. You can gauge that 100%. So I would say take a deep breath, practice these breathing techniques. You can meditate. You can take it deeper. You can go and look into different techniques that you would like to try. But something as simple as taking a deep breath in and out and remembering who you are is very important. That segues into um, maybe me putting you on the spot. You says it, yeah. it's connecting with who you are. How do people even begin? Because since we're talking about get your mind right, who you mm -hmm. are has a lot to how you now view the world and how you participate in that world. How do people get to know self now? Since it says get to know who you are, how do they get to do that? Disconnect. Disconnect. Ooh. Now, one thing I know Abby and I share, we very much dislike Ooh. social media. <laughs> so <laughs> one thing you need to do, one thing you need to do is simply that, disconnect for the night. That means no watching the news before you go to bed. Don't watch what somebody ate for dinner. We don't need the social media. You don't have to stroll through your phone. Take that time to reflect deeply. Get a journal. Write. And one thing I would say, and actually this, this goes in before bed, think about three things, successful things that happened today for you. They could be big or small. Three wins that you achieved for the day. Think about that. And why? And why? Why are those wins for you? What is your definition of success? Dig deeper. Dig deeper. And I will say journaling will help you with that. Journaling, staying grounded, reflection. Reflection is key. Sometimes we do have to isolate ourselves. Right now, I do feel it's very bittersweet. It is very bittersweet, this pandemic, because it is forcing us to simply do that. Come back to self. Reflect with self. Be with one. Be one with ourselves. And so I would say in order to get to know yourself, you have to, you have to talk to yourself. Yep. Someone in the comments said having a hobby is important. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Get to know what you like and what you dislike. Get to know your hobbies, your habits, your traumas. Reflect. Well, we're going to get into traumas because um, one thing I do do um, is I journal. I don't journal yeah. like today I woke up and the sun was right. out. I journal deep thoughts, how I, how I got through the challenges of the day, what it, mm -hmm. what it made me feel like at the end of my day, what I've accomplished at the end of that day. Sometimes it is just maybe one sentence. Sometimes it is two pages. Sometimes it's half a page. I don't put pressure on myself to have this perfect journal. It is what I'm releasing at that moment right. that I jot it down because it gives me perspective. You know, I think pe people yeah. get into journaling and they want to write down everything they did at every moment of every day. I just right. simply jot down the things that impacted me, what I can do differently, not even tomorrow, because tomorrow is a whole different beast by itself. Right. So I deal with the moment, and I'm learning. I'm learning to live in the moment because I'm a planner. I like to know what I'm going to do the next day, and I'm going to get up and do that. But then sometimes it doesn't work that way, and then what? what then? Like on Monday, I wanted to make low, um, shampoos and conditioners, but uh -huh. the divine said, 
I will need you to make some feminine products. But my mind was all on the weekend about making these shampoos and conditioners. So when she said that, I was like, but I found me going to butt. But she says, I, she was very firm, make the feminine products. I said, okay, because mama is in charge. As, as Rod Hayes uh -huh. said, big mama is in charge. <laughs> so I said, okay, mama. Mm-hmm. Right, so I only just made yeah. the shampoos and conditioners, yes, and I was putting myself on the so much OCD. If I make the shampoo, I must make the conditioner to match at the same time. And mm -hmm. I found that I got interruption from people coming in, people just stopping by, um, people wanting to, to just have a conversation. And I realized I was getting in my head, like, man, why did you have to come now because I'm doing this? And I released, right. <laughs> I released that. I was able to release that and say, well, hold on. There's no rush. Why are you putting yourself under pressure to make this stuff? Tomorrow is there. Make what you can make today and then deal with tomorrow as it comes. So is it, like you said, it's a matter of letting go and letting that energy to work its way within and not getting yeah. in my head, getting my mind right, yeah. right? Right. By not getting in my head and putting me on the pressure to produce. You just touch on traumas. And a lot mm -hmm. of us are dealing with family traumas. I can say, um, since we're, we're family here, right? My sister yep. hasn't spoken to me. My younger sister hasn't spoken to me in four years. Mm -hmm. Nothing I did in four years. And yeah. when I returned to the island, then she calls me like, we best friends, like something just happened. Like we just had a conversation, but you haven't spoken to me in four years. So that's some trauma there that I may not yeah. know about. Um, mm -hmm. How do we know deal with family traumas like that? I kind of put you on the spot, I, but you, you kind of put it out there. So I'm just gonna, how do we deal no with worries. traumas? No worries. Trauma, it truly depends in your case. And we do understand boundaries. Discuss boundaries. So setting boundaries, even with the ones that you love, is very healthy. And it's very important. Communication is key. And if you cannot communicate openly and honestly with such an emotional level, you have no relationship. And you have to protect yourself first. Mm. And I understand family is family. Because mm. trust me, I've got trauma in my family as well. I have had my restraints with my, my own brother. Just the same. But we also have to protect our heart. We have to protect our being, our energy. For those who will manipulate it. Or those who don't care for it as deeply as they should. Now... I will say with trauma, trauma comes in so many different types of scenarios. One for me being when I moved to North Carolina, I was so far outside of my comfort zone. I was doing things. I was saying things that my fiance went, whoa, I've never seen this side of you before. Or I didn't know those were the kind of habits you had. Where did you get that? Or why are you speaking that way? It's learned behavior. It's learned behavior. A lot of the things, a lot of the toxicity I grew up with, I began to normalize in my day-to-day -day life, really. And I didn't, I didn't even know I had trauma. I said, I'm okay. Just like some of us do. We go about our day. Especially within the black community, um, we tend to normalize being strong all the time. You know, we can't, we can't be beat. We can't be, we can't be emotional. We're not depressed. We're not sad. What is that? You know, so a lot of the time we put it away. We put it in the back seat and we continue on. And even though we ignore it, it's there. Now it's pestering itself in very different ways. So it may not show up today, but it shows up very differently. You don't, you may not have to say anything, but what it is you're doing, the jobs you're working the lifestyle you're leading, that is your trauma. You are breeding your trauma. Now, trauma will come to you in many different ways. Um, a lot of it, of course, is rooted in childhood trauma. It can be rooted in just relationships. You can get that from a significant other who's not treating you correctly. 
so to speak. We get trauma from all types of people and environments, you know, and so our way of dealing with it truly is to communicate openly and honestly. If you can't do it with the individual it happened with, you got to do it with yourself. You have to cleanse yourself first. You have to cleanse yourself. And to cleanse yourself, you have to prioritize yourself, which all comes back to what it is we're discussing today, prioritizing your health and your well-being. That's where you write down who should be around me. What kind of people do I want around me? What are the pros and cons of this person? How do I protect my energy and how do I keep it moving? So you have to set the boundaries in place in order for everybody else to respect you. You have to have those kind of individuals around you to make that happen. A hundred percent. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> I like what you say. Who are the people around me? You know, the funny thing is, a lady came in my shop today, and um, she was just talking to me about her job. And she said mm -hmm. she worked at Doc for 14 years, and she was made redundant. She went into another job, and mm -hmm. she said one of her criteria, her criteria to the new employer was, don't stress me out. I know my job. <laughs> I love it. She was, Already. She was matter of fact, she don't stress me out. I know my job. Leave me, let me do what I'm supposed to do. I've been doing this 40 years, so I pretty much know what I'm doing. She said love within it. two weeks, the woman was ranting and raving. She says, I just looked at her. I said, when I took, took this job, I told you I don't want any stress. She says, I packed up my bag and I hit out her tank. <laughs> She says, I, at my age, she, says I am a, she says, I am approaching 50 at my age. I don't want any stress in my life. I hear that. And then she was done. She was done. I said, oh, my goodness. I said, good for you. And we just got into a conversation. She says, I need to come back and sit and chat with you. Um, I love it. Because, yes, yes, I, I was cracking. I think we lost you. If anything, I'm going to try. Me, a person, I'm going to try with you. But if I mm -hmm. find that after two or three tries and you still want to act a fool, I'm out. I don't have yeah. time. And that's from years of, of doing that. I don't have time to be babysitting somebody. At this stage, we right. should know what we want, what we don't want. I might yep. give you a chance, a second chance, maybe a third chance, depending on the circumstance. But after that right. chance, I'm, afraid, I'm done. Because at the end of the day, I have to save me. I have to save my, my mental energy for what really matters, and which is me. Very much agree. Yep. You know, I can't keep giving, mm -hmm. giving. And that trickles down from the mind to the rest of you because then you realize not even realizing you say you know what enough is enough i love me right. i have to love me enough to save me the yana van john always say save yourself yeah you have to save yes. yourself you could run 100%. to friends and you could tell them this you could tell them that but at the end of the day you have to be willing to put in the work to yep. save yourself and know that if the universe has taken it from you she's got better coming your way you I know, uh, but instance where the universe said to me, leave him yeah, the universe said, leave him alone. Leave him alone. And me and my wisdom, hey, I left him alone for a couple of days. That don't mean I picked up the phone and called him, and it was disaster. It yeah. was a disaster because here's the divine goddess saying mm -hmm. to me, leave him alone. And I spoke to a friend of mine, um, uh, you know, <laughs> my, I call her Newt. My mm -hmm. my new princess, my new goddess, universal sun child. And she says, I tell her, talk to me dirty. Talk to me the way you would cuss somebody out. It's okay. She said, well, knowing who you are, I can't just do that to you. But I'm going to tell you a few things. <laughs> uh -huh. 
I gave her permission to speak to me the way I I needed to hear it raw. And she was she was raw but kind. And I said she said if the universe said to you if the divine mother said to you let it go then let it go. And she said just step into your own healing. You messed up your own healing. And she was absolutely correct. Wow. So I was able I apologized to the divine goddess. I went mm-hmm. with and I says, "Mama, I'm sorry. I'm going to listen." And this was like 2 weeks ago, and to be honest, since I've done that, it is like this flood gate just opened up. This portal just opened up. And wow. the the freedom, the freedom that comes with letting go. I connected to centers to parts of me that I did not even know. We did the live wow. with you and after that live, I felt like I could go and push down some mountains. Wow. It was everything for me. And ladies, That's let beautiful. me tell you. You are an amazing human being and you've got so much to give to the world. I felt I really empowered. And the thing is You just said what I knew within. Look how clear you're coming through now. You just said what I knew within, but was too cowardly to face myself. I was a coward to face myself. I wanted to live in my funk. Because mm-hmm. I wanted to live, I wanted to have that pity party and I wanted to invite all of my for the two geishas that live within. I wanted to invite mm-hmm. them to my pity party. But when I they got mm-hmm. to the pity party it was not fun because nobody wanted to hear my pity shit story. So I had mm-hmm. to get real about myself and say, "You know what? It's time to stop being a victim and be the victor." You didn't come on Absolutely. this earth to nobody step in stool. Absolutely. Get out Absolutely. of your way. Get out mm-hmm. of your way. Now, yep. when the mother gives you a directive, listen, it may not make sense at that moment but believe me it will make sense it will make sense absolutely it will make sense you have to it embrace your failure you have to embrace your failure yes. that's the only way we know how to win that's it so that's you, right you have already gotten your comeback story you are the comeback queen let me tell you <laughs> when i help you learn that's how we learn <laughs> Let me tell you, I've been there. <laughs> yes. You're Let illuminating. You. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's brilliant. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Listen, to I, you, I will say this publicly, you've got so much to give to the world and you will give it to the world because I see it for you. It's not a matter of saving people. but you will help people save themselves because we can't really save people but we help them save themselves that's your gift and you are coming full circle into your gift full circle into your gift i see that's it coming oh that's the beautiful world, all i could ever ask. World, oh gosh the world just True. waits for you you are that butterfly and you're yeah. going to spread your wings Love the divine it. sent Love you at this time that this time and you have to be she's a guy i agree she's a guy there oh, see wow. the universe is, she is appreciate you. the divine thank you yes she sent you for us to connect to do this work because our women our sisters need us they need us to help them to realize themselves We may not have the millions of followers and it's not about followers, right? It's about people right. getting this message and recognizing we are in fifth dimension energy. Fifth dimension energy calls for creativity. Certainly. This year is the fifth year. This year is the year of the mother. This month mm-hmm. alone, that portal opens on sec- the, the, the 2nd of February and the portal closes on 2-22-22. Yep. This month between this period people keeping their vibration high and that's why this is so important because we agreed to meet at this time for yep. this special moment. 
the divine creative energy is here with us it's not coming it is here yes it is not coming it is here we are ready to take this thing by storm we are waiting for somebody to come through the clouds to save us we are the christ we are the gods yeah you hear me I hear that. Uh, we get to wow. celebrate that with our sisters. We get to celebrate that you are going to play that key role throughout this year. This is your time. And I and want you to step into you. that knowing that you're guided yeah. and protected. Absolutely. And remember there's a song children go where I send thee. <laughs> See what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mhm. Mm Mm -hmm. All right. So Cindy. Yes. How can people now get a hold of you for your services? Tell the people how they can reach you. All right. Well, as you all know, a rose, a rose underscore beyond. That is my Instagram. You are more than welcome to message me at any time. Um, I do have a calendarly account. So you can make an appointment with me just to talk to me. We can sit down and speak for 30 minutes. And then from there, we can go ahead. I, we were not talking prices. Just exclusively for the Sacred Sister Talk, I am available for free. <laughs> okay? So hit me up with any messages, anything you'd like to discuss. So a rosebeyond.com, that's where you can um, go ahead and message me. You can look through my site, any services, anything you'd like to discuss with me in further detail, hit me up. I am available. I know Abigail will give you guys my, my Instagram. A rosebeyond.com is my website on my platform, but you'll see all that on my Instagram as well. So just shoot me a message anytime. Guys. Before we all go, um, since we're talking about the mind, uh, Cindy got me to thinking. And at night before I turn it, you can see how the book looks. It's, it's, it's a book from 19-something, 1950-something. Wow. It's pretty mm -hmm. old. And it's called Three Magic Words by U.S. Anderson. And before I turn it, the last thing I do, I read something that uplifts me. Um, I while away the, 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 what I go through during the day, I will listen to some calm music. I'm a jazz freak, so I'll listen to some music. And then before I turn the lights out, I'll read from this book or one of the books that I'm reading from. And the chapter three is, deals with the mind, the mysteries of the mind. It says, miracle of ages, master of all, all mind that ever must be, heart, to the sound of thy father's call to the throne and the crown that waited for thee. This is for every one of us. Put your crown on, y'all. Y'all are not slaves. You're not somebody's wife, somebody's mother, somebody's aunt, somebody's grandmother, somebody's uncle. You are divine being. Put your crown on. Yeah, Please. the crown is waiting. You have to. My goodness, you have I'm to telling. step all the way into your power. This year is that year. You're not gonna wait till next year. You're not gonna wait till the year after that. You're mm -hmm. not gonna do all of that. This is the time. The mother yeah. is here to embrace you, to guide you. So, on that note, y'all. On that note, this was a great life. Cindy and I are going to work Wonderful. on um, I'm putting her on the spot. We're going to work on yeah. doing a tour through the Zoom. And yeah. That way we can really you know, help people come yeah. to a different place. Because Instagram is one thing, but to me, Zoom is a little bit more intimate. Um, yeah. Support what Cindy is doing for us. She's a young woman stepping into her purpose. So, so go ahead and her and link her in in the bio. She is a beautiful spirit. I'm so honored to have met her. I'm so honored she's a part of my life on this leg of my journey. 
She is ushering me in to my divinity, which is unstream. She's ushering me into my divinity. <laughs> it is not being easy being Hathor. It is not be easy being Hathor in this time. Um, so you're ushering me into that. And I so, I'm so excited for this moment for me. I'm so excited. My heart is full. Every time I talk to you, my heart gets full. You and me this both. is such a beautiful time for us. Oh, it is full. It is full. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure we're going to come again sometime soon. We're going to work on some topics Very to bring simple. to you. Um, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Like I said, link Cindy in the bio. And we. And I'm not sure if we'll be here next week. Cindy and I will talk about that what? offline. Um, but this is the time. I want to bring more programs like this that elevates us mentally because that's where our problem is. Not the physical aspect, it is all here. So right. I want to bring more programs like that that helps us connect the dots. I could come on here and give you all kinds of information, not even prophecy. I could come over here and give you all kinds of information that's coming. What I'm going to say between now and the 22nd, keep your vibration high. Keep your frequency high. Because these, these negative entities are trying to connect because... They've already lost the bottle. I had an experience with a young man this morning come to the shop, and he came to do whatever he came to do, but from the time he came in, he felt that energy, and he did not know what to do with himself. Because this is, listen, the divine is not here to play. This is, 3D is done. When he yep. came in there, he looked around, and he saw them lions standing at the door. And whatever he thought he came to do, when he turned around and saw them, I saw fear in his eyes. Because if he had done anything, he might get in, but he may not get out. That's right. what kind of power we're working with here. Sisters, you've got the power. You have the power. Truly. It's not in Walmart. It's not in Target. It's, not, it's in within you. Go within. Go within and know that you are all powerful. You are the divine in the physical presence you hear me and i know this is going to resonate with somebody out there you are the divine in the physical you are an aspect of her you are the daughters of oset okay i'm not going to go any deeper than that so cindy thank you so much i know we're thank going to you. come back sometime soon i'm Very hoping soon. that we can connect I in Thank you. you. You're an amazing young lady. So amazing. I appreciate you, Pam. Truly. I love my you so heart. Much. Thank you for giving me this platform to speak to these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people. I appreciate it. This was a beautiful life, y'all. Listen, y'all. Very much so. On the 22nd of February, we are having a webinar, and it's called The Womb, The Holies of Holies. And that is going to be brought to you via self. Um, I call her Mama Thelma. She is my mentor here on the island. Mama Thelma has over six years' experience working uh, within the African communities in the UK. She's a transplant from the UK here in Barbados. Wealth of knowledge. She is 86, and the woman looks like about 60. Wow. Mm. She is amazing. When she talks to you, you feel like. You're in, you at the feet. You you sit at her feet because she is quick with it. I'm going to church with her tomorrow. She's quick with it. She's going. <laughs> she's bringing a presentation called "The Womb, the Holies of Holies." And I heard that presentation, and I know, ladies. Let me tell you something. You're not going to look at your womb the same way again. You're not yeah. going to look at the womb the same way. So that's on the 22nd at 7 p.m. I'm going to post a flyer on my page. So I hope you guys, it's a free event. It's a free event. Um, I forgot to tell you guys, Cindy is also a spoken word artist. Oh, my goodness. Cindy. <laughs> Cindy yes. spoken word. You want to do something for the people or no? That's I, on the spot. I sure can. That's fine. I sure can. You know. And me. then I'm going to let you get out of here. Want to do something for all right? 
I will do. Uh, <laughs> I'll do a little something for you the crowd. Okay. okay. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. That's a good way to end the the show. <laughs> All right. Let me see. <clears throat> I'm reminiscing upon a time that passes by. I find a future in the past tense. Tell me why, oh why, oh why are we so blind to see that we live a life in jeopardy? Life is just a game. No, we're not the same. Variations of our tone, that's what causes all the shame. That's what causes all the blame. In our Father's name we pray. In God they say we trust, but is the holy bread enough? Feed our hungry hearts, lead us out the dark, don't erase our marks. Yeah, we know we're smart. We live in no disguise, a blessing from the skies, blessing to your eyes, blessing from a universal mind in which they cannot define. Word. What's yours has always been mine. They say we sold out because our soul's out, and every historical chain is ours to break down. Some live their life in lust, some live their life in pain. Systematic tame is all that ever comes our way, and no, it's no mistake. Hell yeah, we victimized. How the hell are we supposed to thrive amongst a world of lies? Man, it's a shame all the things we could have done without their claim. they ego-ridden. Division of the masses. Division of religion. In case you missed it, I ain't no statistic. Just a bitch by the media. Hips just made for pleasing. Yeah, we're more than what they see in us. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's the shit. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Well, please, you there are you so go. Oh, my Appreciate goodness. Queens, you've got to rise, sisters. This is the time to rise up. Our men are waiting for us. They've got the knowledge. They have got the knowledge. They're waiting for us to step into our power. Don't worry if they don't like it. If they don't like it, they ain't for you. So you've got <laughs> to step part. all the way into your power. You rise they, up, they go meet you there. And if they can't meet you there, they ain't for you. If he's intimidated by your power, he ain't for you. But we going to get there. Part. You got to rise up. Mm -hmm. But how you going to get him is you got to be ready to be mama. You are big mama here. You got to be little mama and step into that power. Okay. And don't worry about that. If he cannot meet you where you are, he is not for you. It's simply that put, part. step part. all the way into your shit. Step all the way in. On that note, yeah. y'all, I love y'all. We're going to meet back here at some point. I'm going to bring y'all some, not prophecy, but I'm going to bring y'all some information y'all need from the Divine Mother. It's high. Sister Earth is not here to play. She's not Mother Earth. She's Sister Earth. She is on her journey. Let's all rise together. We can do this. We've done it before. We'll do it again. Come on, y'all. All right. Talk it. to you guys soon, Cindy. Honored. Honored. Bye. Thank you. Bye, you guys. guys. Thank you so much. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Hope to see you soon. Yes. <laughs>